Hey everybody, it is Quicken and welcome back to my channel. I just got some really great news, so I'm sorry if I have the sillies, but today I wanted to talk to you and this is Tuesday, so normally I post tattoo content on Tuesday, but this is kind of like body mod related and it is something I wanted to talk about, especially after um, two weeks ago talking about my earlobe reconstruction. You can check that video out. It's kind of just like my guide to, you know, going through the thought process of getting your earlobes reconstructed and like what to do from there. So there was a couple questions on that video that I tried to reply to because there was a couple questions about the permanence of body modification and different piercings and procedures and their permanence. So I got this question last night on my Instagram that kind of like brought all of that together and it will answer a couple questions I get on my channel a lot anyway. So it says, hey Quicken, after seeing your video about your earlobe reconstruction, I was wondering if you would ever try to get your filtrum piercing scar reduced, removed. I've been considering a filtrum piercing for a long time and I love how they look, but I don't know where I'll be in 30 plus years or whatever and I would rather not have a permanent hole in my face, like me. But half of my argument with myself is that I could get the scar from it removed if it really bothers me that much. Does that mean I shouldn't get it if I'm not ready to have it for the rest of my life? I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Love your videos. And that's from Wheelie Cakes. So this kind of coincides with some of the questions and stuff I feel like I got on the other video and I tried to answer them, but my, for the most part, my answer is body mods are permanent. So I worry because there's a lot of language online that's like, oh, you can stretch your ears to a double zero and they'll go back to normal and you can do this and it'll go back to normal. And I think some of that information just isn't true and it's too broad of an umbrella to cover everybody. Even the other day, I went to Infinite Body Piercing just to have a consultation about the current state of my earlobes and just even that, the anatomy is so specific to the person. Anatomy is just different between people, so I just feel like a statement that broad isn't true. Especially like, I've had people in my life who stretch to a double zero, downsized, and even when they wear like, heavy earrings or hoop earrings, it still pulls. So I would say any body modification is permanent, no matter what it is. Even having my earlobes reconstructed, my second earlobes that I got when I was a kid, my second earlobe piercings I got when I, when I was a kid are still there. So it's still permanent, just like will it become more unnoticeable? I'm a great example of you know, thinking, I'm gonna get it and I'm gonna love it forever. And it's just not always true. And in my case, I don't wear, wear any of my piercings anymore. I don't, currently I don't have any jewelry on my body. Six years ago, seven years ago, that was a completely different story. I had like 20 piercings on my face and body and I thought I was gonna be that way forever. It's not something I regret, but I do have a hole in my lip. And I was talking to John the other day, and I was like, you know, you're used to it. You see me every day, so you don't think that there's like a hole in my lip. But there is, and it's pretty noticeable. So to answer this person's question, I'm going to kind of talk about the history of my filtrum piercing and why it is so noticeable. And there are options where you could get a smaller gauge filtrum piercing, and that hole would probably be a lot cuter and more tolerable, but nonetheless, a little hole in your face. I have a video talking about all of my piercing scars, which if you want me to update, I would love to because I filmed that a while ago. I don't know if the quality is of a like digestible standard at this point. But in that video, I talk about how, you know, my nostrils were stretched and the scar is pretty noticeable on both sides you know, the conch holes, I have a video all about that. So it's kind of just like, even if you go into modifying your body now, you really do have to understand that no matter what, a day will come where they come out. If it's for a surgery, if it's for a job interview, if it's just a change in taste or lifestyle, all of those things happen. And before I jump into talking about my filtrum, like I said, 
I don't think my lifestyle has really changed that much. I mentioned in my earlobe reconstruction video, my lifestyle hasn't changed a lot, a lot. You know, I, it's just different now. I just dress a little bit differently. No, I, I kind of don't, but I'm like proving my, my point. Even though I feel like everything is the same about me with some tweaks and some just experience changes and a little more knowledge, even though I feel like me when I was 22 and me now are kind of the same person, we're ju you're just different. You're just evolved and things change and body modifications, be it minimum like piercings or more severe like scarification are permanent. So why do I have a big fat hole in my philtrum as opposed to other people? So my philtrum isn't a great poster child for what a standard gauge philtrum piercing might look like because my philtrum was stretched to a two gauge. I had my piercing, I had my philtrum pierced at a six. So I already went in there with a larger gauge than usual but my filtrum wasn't scalpeled, so the tissue wasn't removed. If you go into it and you want like a four gauge filtrum, they'll probably use a scalpel or a dermal punch. In that case, tissue is removed. Because I stretched my filtrum to a two and then took the piercing out, this is the result. Kind of a big, bigger hole in my lip. It's not open, I can't squirt water through it. I do clean it because, you know, it does get like, a little bit of makeup or just a little bit of dry skin in it and I kind of just clean it when I'm washing my entire face and just give myself like a little just like open her up a little bit ideally like I don't really like the way it looks like I think it's cute and I definitely live with it a hundred percent and it's not in the front of my mind of getting it reconstructed or fixed I do know somebody who had their filtrum punched out at a larger gauge, maybe like a four gauge, and had it reconstructed, but they can grow a mustache and they wear a mustache, so because of that, I really don't know what the results of my filtrum reconstruction would be and if I would get it because I have had my filtrum pierced for 10 years and I don't really know what I would look like without it. There's kind of like no way to hide it though because it is smack dab on my face. It's the first thing that people see because it's just unusual. It's a little bit of an oddity and I live with that. That's completely okay. If you, like the person who asked me the question said they want to get it done but they're worried about the scar in the future, I think if you're worried maybe you shouldn't do it. And I, you know, I think that that statement is a little unfair but it is cautionary because like answering the person oh, can I stretch to a double zero and go back? I would say no. It's much better to say no because if you do want to wear hoop earrings, hello? Oh my God, are you so excited? Sorry about that. Like the person who said, can I go back after double zero? I think that a lot of it has to do with anatomy. And like I said, if you wanted to wear dangling earrings or heavy earrings, you would see pull and probably see through the piercing and I think that that should be something that's considered. Although fixing it isn't too invasive, fixing it would be required. You know, you could get Botox or Juvederm injection in your earlobe to kind of make that hole a little tighter, a little fatter, but it's not a permanent solution. You would have to get that done or redone every time it dissolves. If you're okay with needing to have reconstruction surgery in the future, I think that that's a good step. I think that's fair. Like they'd mentioned, would they need some sort of reconstruction in 30 years into the future? I would say go into it knowing that that is probably a huge possibility. I think that there are outliers and in the comment section there might be people who are like I was at this and went back to completely standard ears and I think that that's true. My friend Ryan, his ears were stretched and he took his plugs out and his ears went completely back to normal in appearance but he wasn't able to wear earrings ever again, even standard post earrings. However, if you decide to never wear earrings again, that would work for you. And like I said, there's always gonna be outliers. Like I got my nose pierced 
and I took the pokes out and my nose is completely normal. That's great. Wish it was me. My nose is insane. It is scarred and the scars like push in because the piercing was stretched. So although I was very happy with how I looked modified, I did take all my piercings out for a job that I 100% needed and 100% changed the quality of my life at the time. So I don't have any regrets in that way. I did the right thing and I made the responsible decision. And you never know when you may be faced with a kind of decision like that in your life. So definitely something to know. Even my microdermal piercings have left pretty predominant and noticeable scars on my face. And I live with those 100% and they don't bother me, but to each his own. If you've ever wondered about the hole in my lip, which I get less comments about now, it is just a hole that's open on my face every day. I think not super noticeable. Um, I don't really know about any temporary solutions like Botox or Juvederm kind of solution for me. I did have two laser resurfacing treatments on my face just to kind of alleviate any sort of scarring and I didn't notice any difference at all. Honestly, now I have kind of enlarged pores on this side of my face, which I didn't have before. So with that, solutions may also not res give you results that you want either. Like I would say some results can't be guaranteed, especially with scar, like laser resurfacing. I didn't notice any differences in my scars. Although I had only had two treatments and six treatments were recommended to me, but they hurt and they sucked and it was bad and I didn't notice any differences in my scars. So that's kind of how I feel about questions like that. I do err on the side of caution and I do lean towards more talk about the permanence versus the few who got away with little to no remnants of having any sort of body modification history. My final thought is, you know, if you are into body mod and it's something that you understand and you go into with the understanding that you may or 100% will need some sort of reconstructive or rehabilitation to your face, be it laser resurfacing or plastic surgery or injections or living with a couple scars on your face. Do understand that anything you do to your face or your body could be permanent and should be expected to be permanent. As piercings heal, your body is fighting off this like foreign object that is in your skin. And like, for example, a lot of people have their nose pierced and I think it was a hard piercing to heal. My body constantly was fighting it off and I had like the red ring about around it forever. And then when it finally healed, that's because your body healed around it. And that's how the scar forms. You probably know that, but but I will say I used to have the industrial bar like across my ear and it never ever wanted to heal. After a year, it was still tough to sleep on. A little bump would make it red for days. And when I took that out, I would say that there is barely any indication that I had it. And I would say because it wasn't healed when I took it out. So if you let a piercing heal, your body has created almost like a new hole around it and assume that that is permanent. That is kind of my little word of wisdom to you guys. You can always submit questions to me. I'm happy to answer them. I'm sorry if that was like kind of negative, especially because there is such good energy right now. But I have always like wanted to get on my soapbox and say that because I can tell you right now, when I had my filtrum pierced and then stretched, it was something I really thought I wanted forever. And I took, like, at one, one day I took it out. And when the opportunity came for me to, like, be allowed to put it back in, I was just like, that's okay. Um, I'm good. So, you never know when it'll happen to you, if it does happen to you, for any reason at all. My cautionary tale to you 
is every piercing has a scar. Anyway, I love you guys so much. Thanks for joining me on Tuesday for a little talk like this. Definitely leave your experience in the comments below. I think it is more helpful to paint an honest picture for people who are getting into piercings because when I first started stretching my ears, I definitely heard the like double zero urban legend. I thought that way too. And now there's a hole in my lip every single day. And it might not bother you guys and it might not bother me, but it is there. And I go outside hoping that no one will talk to me about it. <laughs> anyway, I love you guys so much. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me and the channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. You can leave any sort of question in the comments down below, or you can follow me on Instagram at quietcoolkid. I have a tattoo talk playlist listed down below that has over a hundred videos in it, so you can check that out as well and I will see you later on this week. I love you guys so much. Bye!